Welcome to the Spark Report. John W. Davis and Pavy. What's going on, Pav? How you feeling? Up, man? How you feeling? I'm good. How are you feeling? I feel pretty good. It was yeah. an interesting beginning to WNBA free agency. It was. A lot of things going on with the Sparks. We're going to talk about it. If you're tuning in on YouTube, drop a comment. We'll talk about, we're taking some questions. We'll talk about those, but I'll just get right to it. You have to start with Candace Parker and Chelsea Gray no longer being on the Sparks. And because she's Candace Parker, I feel like we have to start by talking about Candace Parker. Of course. Of course. Candace Parker goes to your hometown team, her hometown team, the Chicago Sky. I saw some people being petty and being like, it's not our hometown team because she's from Naperville. I saw some people being petty and saying that. But but yeah, 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 yeah. Candace. It's her metro team. Naperville does yeah. not have a WNBA team. Candace, Candace, Candace went back to her metropolitan area. She went home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She went home. Uh, we already got two comments. Forever 7 Fresh or whatever your name is. Is there any news of other free agents or trade? Seems like LA is looking to tank this year. We'll talk about that. I don't think LA is looking to tank, but first of all, let's talk about Candace Parker. So she goes yeah. home. She goes replaces home. the other CP. I kind of feel bad for Cheyenne Parker because Cheyenne Parker is the odd woman out. She had to go sign with the dream because they said this Parker is better than the Parker we had. Um, do you think do you think at this stage Candace Parker is better for the sky than Cheyenne Parker would have been for the sky? I mean, That's the first question. I mean, but but obviously we got to remember like they're running a business number 1 and mm -hmm. I think that you know bringing Candace Parker home to Chicago. I even text uh, I remember I, I used to go to well, one of my homies shout out my homie Illy, uh the boy of the noise incredible artist. He had uh like not sky season tickets, but he had like sky tickets. And I remember like I went to because I went to a, a couple of sky games when I was like every time I go to Chicago, I go mm -hmm. to like a, a sky game. It's like the, right. the also the like stadium. It's right downtown. You know, hopefully we can have some fans in there in the um summertime. But literally, it's right in like the uh South Loop. It's in a very very prime location. It's not hard to get to. Bringing a name which Candace Parker, like my dad know, like I'm gonna call my dad like yo, you know Candace Parker is mm -hmm. on the sky. He might go to a game just because right. like. Candace Park is on the sky. Like, is she a better basketball player? Number one, I think the answer is yes. And then also, she's just a better marketable person in general. Like, my dad, shout out to Ann Parker. Like, yeah. she can hoop, she can ball, but my dad don't know her. My By grandma. Social, yeah. My By social is, metrics. Yeah, my grandma is 90. If I call her right now, she might have heard of Candace Parker. Yeah. Like, seriously. No, I'm like, right. yo, she's playing on the, so, it's, it's, so, it's just, she's. And yes, I think she does help basketball wise. I mean, we can even when I looked at the roster, I was like, eh, I had like a couple drawbacks, but then also I was like, nah, you still adding a very, very smart basketball player to the to the roster. Like they'll figure it out. But right. um, yeah. Okay, so I got a couple thoughts. I think one of the biggest things is yes, it's home for. Her, and I believe I've said this on a previous show that I don't ever blame anybody for going home. If she was gonna go somewhere, home is where you go. Second of all. James Wade, Russian connection. Candace Parker enjoyed her time in Russia. He is an assistant coach on that super team over there where the Chicago, basically the Chicago Sky East, so yeah. quickly in Vandersloot, he is the assistant coach on that team. And so, and Candace Parker has played in that region before as well. So, there's all these synergies for Candace Park. It's not just going home. You know, it's not just having an extended support staff during the summer, you know, with family and friends. There's also that too. Like there's that built-in connection from when she played Euroball over yeah. here too. So that's another thing you got to think about I mean, too. And, and, her, and, her and Quigley are from the same area. And, her and, and Quigley also, was on the all high school team together. And I didn't know that, but also let's keep it all the way G. She also might just think the sky present her with a better chance to win the championship. If she Chelsea's gone, Chelsea. if Chelsea's gone, which she no, is, then yeah. Like, no, even though, no, even if Chelsea was there, like is 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 Chelsea hands down better than uh Vandersloop? Yes. Because she can play some defense. 
I'm Vander not, defense I'm not is, going off that. Vander Sloot's defense is I'm not, not going off that. It's not Chelsea, quality. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not. The reason the reason, the reason why I'm not going to let you say that hands down is because off, of, off judging. Now, if we want to talk about the 2019 season, okay. But if we're going to judge off the 2020 season, no, I cannot say that. I think I'm judging off the totality of what I know about Chelsea Gray and the totality of what I know about Courtney Vandersloot. I think it's great for the sky that Courtney Vandersloot is no longer the best player on the team. I thought Diamond Shields was the best player anyway. Like, well, so if we talk about 2020. Yes, Courtney Vandersloot was, yes. I think it's great right. that she is no longer the best player on the team. Now, some nights she will be the best player on the team. Some nights Diamond will be the best player. Some nights Candace Parker. They can kind of go back to what she did with the Sparks where, you know, it's somebody else's night every night. Yeah. So, I again, I can't blame her for going home. I thought she was going to stay. I, I thought, thought Chelsea was going to stay. I thought they were all going to stay because I thought if Candace stayed, I didn't think Chelsea could leave Candace. From they the say they say they made their discussions or made their where they were going independently. So I just take them for their word at that. But they both were able to leave at the same time. I mean, from the beginning, I just thought that Chelsea would probably be if anybody. I didn't think Candace would leave because it's Candace and like Sparks, Candace Parker. I just thought that Candace is the person who plays. You know, for one franchise, her whole career. I, that's just I thought what so I, too. I just thought. I thought so too. Chelsea goes. I thought if we saw somebody leave, Chelsea would probably be the one that we. But saw it's leave. it's a new age though. Now, man, she's co-workers, teammates with Dwayne Wade. He came home. I mean, we saw how that worked out. But hey, they he came home. Year. They did make the playoffs that year. They did uh, the yeah, because of your boy. Who? Uh, Rondo. Yeah, but I mean, they did make the playoffs. I'm just saying, they, 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 and they would have went farther in the playoffs if the boy if Rondo would have been playing. This is true. This is exactly. True. So it was a Rondo, not D Wade. I mean, yeah, obviously, I'm just saying he was. I'm just saying like that. It didn't go that bad. Like they did go to the playoffs. Uh, shout out to Maurice Johnson who said, uh, "So y'all let Candace leave without telling her you love her." I'm hurt. LOL. But it's cool. I'm officially a Sky fan now. That's another thing I want to talk about. And if you are a Candace Parker fan, I think it's okay to be a Candace Parker fan when she's on a different team. If you're an LA Sparks fan, it's still okay to just be an LA Sparks fan, even though Candace Parker isn't here. Like, it's okay that you have team allegiance or player allegiance. Whatever you want to do is fine, in my opinion. But if you are truly a Sparks fan, you're going to rock with the Sparks regardless. Like me, I'm truly a Detroit Pistons fan. I rock with the Pistons regardless. It could be Plumlee and Blake Griffin and Jeremy Grant and Wayne Ellington and DeLon Wright, which is my starting lineup now. Is that ideal? No, but I still rock with the Pistons. So if you're going to be a Sparks fan, be a Sparks fan. If you're not, if you just was all about the Sparks just because of Candace Parker, which I don't think most Sparks fans are, then you should be okay with this. And it's okay to to love the Sparks. And then if Candace Parker comes, you know, you root for Candace Parker every game, but she uh, uh, unless she plays the Sparks. So however you want to do it, I think it's fine. Uh, somebody said bring over the, the European player, Alina Iguapova. Sure. If you can get her to come, this is the perfect time for it now because now you can tell her, Alina, we got playing time for you now. You don't have to come over and just work your way into the lineup and be a part of the bench or something like that. Maurice said he's from the D. Shout out to the D. Um, um, but, I mean, but again, like me personally, um, when I saw the news, I mean, we have even had discussions. I even said that I think you give it one more year um, mm -hmm. just because, like, I thought you were getting close to the time where it's like, you know what, this probably isn't going to work. Let's just break it down, rebuild. I mean, they just made the – Candace just made – Candace and Chelsea just made the, the decision completely for you. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it was time, though. I think if you give – you know, like, right, I don't know what Fish and Candace's relationship were. Or Fish and Chelsea, I'm, I'm not going to speculate. I don't know. It's none of my business. But if but if you give Fish I, – I, 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 I still like this – I still feel like the team last year still had Penny's imprint kind of all over it. You know, okay. like she was kind of the one who she, you know, preferred bigs. Like she, you know, wanted to still play like it was the 2000s. You know, I think at least personally. 
Um, and I think it still had her footprint over it. And it, and 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 if you're gonna give Fish, you know, GM duties, and you're gonna give him um, coaching duties, then you have to let him put his imprint on this franchise. I think that now it gives him the uh, ability to go out. They have money now. They have money now, so it gives him the ability to go out, get the players that he wants, and really, really install the system that he wants to install. And I and and like I do think that it was time. I do, you know, like when when even when you look at how they lost both uh how 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 the season ended both years to the same team Mm -hmm. basically you know you got new players you got healthy she had a great season kind of like the games even kind of looked the same in some sense of the word even though naked didn't play still you want them to come out with a little bit more force than what they came out and played with i think it was just time i do actually think it was time i do somebody called me sergi baka that's funny (laughs) <laughs> so this is what I got to say. Shout out to Nikki E. I know Nikki E rocks with the show. She loves watching on YouTube. We appreciate you so much. And then Jeanette, she says, the question is, how can the Sparks let her go? This is what I want to tell y'all fans. You cannot keep players anymore. If somebody yeah. wants to go, you just have to let them go. I don't think the Sparks let Candace Parker or Chelsea Gray go. They could have stayed. You, you, you cannot convince me that if, Candace Parker and Chelsea Gray told GM Derek Fisher that we want to come back. They would have been back. I'm going to go down saying that if they wanted to come back, they would have came back. So them leaving, that was their choice. And that's why, you know, shout out to Rachel Galligan with Winsider. I'm wearing the Winsider shirt right now, but shout out to her. And she broke the news that Derek Fisher even told NECA, even when she was court, like, it's okay for you to go talk to some other teams. I want you to stay here because you want to stay here, not because I want you to stay. Yeah. Like this is a league that is empowered to make their own decisions. Now that's the whole point of free agency. That's the whole point of this new CBA. That's the whole point of salaries going up and getting other things that go along with that compensation. So you can make your own decision. And so they made their own decisions. Chelsea Gray, apparently she had, a really good time being recruited by the Las Vegas Aces last off season. They're going to make a documentary about it. Uninterrupted is making a documentary about it. Okay. And so they're going to show us how that worked and that made an impression on her. So then when it came time for her to be an unrestricted free agency, unrestricted free agent, then she still felt that connection. Bill Lambeer, straight shooter. (laughs) straight shooter and so it worked out for her and then now you know most likely she gets to play with Hamby, Angel McCautry, Asia Wilson and Liz Cambage and Liz Cambage and Chelsea Gray share the same agent their synergy there they got a good team they got a great team but there's lots of great teams in the league that's the thing there's At max, there's only 144 players in this league. There's 12 teams, 12 roster spots. Some of these teams, some of these teams won't even start the season with 12. If you could whittle down the NBA to 12 teams, to 144 players, to one third of the players, because it's basically 450 players in the NBA right now, because each roster's got 15. Obviously, they got more than that with the two ways now. But let's just say 450. If you whittle it down to the top third of the league, do you know how good those teams would be? Yeah. Those teams would be amazing. Like, it would, be like, they, they um, would, it would basically be everybody would be a starter. No, nah, it would uh, be like back. Everybody in the, who starts now would be in the league. There would be nah, no bench players. It would uh, be like back in the, you know, 60s. That's why the Celtics can, you could run off what they run off because you have like six Hall of Famers on one team. Like it would be, or, or or like basically when you know every team had multiple all stars, it would be like that again. But um I don't yeah. think this is on Fisher. People keep saying this is on Fisher. I don't no, think it's on him. It's, I, 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 I told you, people you have can't say it's his fault. People have agendas against Derek Fisher for things that have nothing to do with basketball. If you look at what he's nothing to do with basketball, then we're not gonna get into. People just don't like Derek Fisher, and then the whole Candace Parker thing, and then she didn't need to play. Did we see the game? The game in two in uh 2019, Cheney was bringing more to the court at in that game in the final game three 
did what right. Kansas was bringing. She didn't need to play. It's Fisher's job to coach and try to win basketball games. It is right. not his job to try to coddle people. If you weren't getting it done and you don't need to play. So people just don't like Fisher. And again, like I said, I think it was time. Like we got to remember how they went out the past two off seasons. What, 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 how, how the past two seasons ended. It wasn't pretty. You lose to the same team, basically the same way. Even with Chelsea. I love Chelsea. Love talking to her. Great human being. But you saw one double team and it looked like you didn't know what to do two years in a row. You get trapped and you get and, and you just and it just, well, falls apart two years in a row. I think that this roster, especially with the way it was constructed, I think it was front court heavy. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think that they had enough backcourt help. I don't think they had enough perimeter playmakers. Um, it was time to restart. You know, I, it sucks I, it had to happen like this, but yeah. I do think it was time to restart. Now, me personally, I said I would have done it next year. I would have given you know this roster that they signed right, because Christy Tolliver was gonna make a difference. Yes, yes, she was. She, she would have. She would have made a difference. Also, I think Maria would have made a difference. But also, I think it's great for Maria because I think she is a person who needs to play. I think but that if there was Christy Tolliver, there would be no Taya Cooper. So you wouldn't have that going forward. So and, there's, there's balances. And also, I wanted to mention that you can feel comfortable letting a Candace Parker go because you have Taya Cooper. Taya Cooper, according to they like did the ranking, she's the most famous player. In yes, the that's right what now. I was gonna say. Yeah, you talked about the marketability, the marketability of Candace Parker. She's number two on social. Number one is Taya Cooper. So I mean, you got number one for a rookie scale contract, and exactly. you're gonna keep being able to pay a rookie scale for like three more years. Now, obviously, she has to, you know, continue to improve on the court and obviously get better. Right. Um, I think she's good, but she has a community to, to get better. But when you when we talk about just, you know, obviously this is a L.A. So franchise. This so is my know. thing for Caden, Adam, Nikki E., everybody watching right now, and you, Pabby. If I tell you the starting lineup on this team is either Chrissy Tolliver, Sydney Weiss, Brittany Sykes, Neko Gumake, and Chenea Gumake, or Taya Cooper, Chrissy Tolliver, Brittany Sykes, Neko Gumake, and Chenea Gumake, that's not a bad starting team. That's not a bad starting five in the WNBA. Or you could even start Maria Vadiva because I want to start Maria. She's a great player on her super team in Russia. I want to start Whatever, Maria. if you want to start her, then you got five shooters at all times. I want to start Maria because I think she's one of the best players in the league. She just doesn't know it yet. Like they're not gonna start. You can't start. The problem is, is it's going to be hard to start Maria over Cheney because when we saw Cheney actually get to start the year that she first year she was here, the first and only year she played for the team, when she started, she was about 16 and nine. Well, cool. Start her. Fine. Whatever. I just think I'm just 16 personally, and nine, 15 and I, 10. Like you're going to you're going to get a lot of production out of Cheney Agumake. I am just personally happy that Maria will finally get some playing time. Yeah, so I really think that she needed playing time. And also, they still you have to get 20 minutes a game every exactly. single game. Exactly. And also, they still have Christina Nigaway, who I think can develop. I think she can bring some of the energy that mm-hmm. uh, Cheney once brought off the bench. I'm assuming she's going to be starting now. I think, you know, she could, I, I, like, again, I think this team will still be a good team. And I think this team will be more balanced. You didn't need, you had like six, seven, who does that? You had like six, seven bigs. This isn't if, 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 if I still think Derek Fisher wants more height. And if Derek Fisher is constructing this roster at some point, Derek Fisher is going to find a way to get himself a six, six or taller player. Now, I don't know if that's a player who's currently in the league or not, but at some point he's going to want to have more size off the bench because every single time we got a chance to talk to him and I said, oh, who is the person you're most excited about potential wise? He would say Kalani Brown. Now, are they going to get Kalani Brown back? No, probably not. But I think Derek Fisher has an idea on how to use a 6'6 or 6'7 or 6'8 or 6'9 player and make a difference with that. Right now, this roster is still pretty short comparatively because when you go up against, you know, Big Seal at 6'6 and then, you know, you go up against Griner at 6'9", and you go up against Cam Beige at 6'8", you, you're just going to be faced with some problems. Yes, but no. At the same the time. only reason you won't be faced with problems is because those teams don't use those players right. If those teams use those players right and they gave them the ball, it would be like Liz Cam Beige when she scored 50. She'd have 50 every other week if you used really? her right. 
But also, but 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 but, but also the thing with that is, I think the Sparks can play five out. I mean, mm-hmm. I think she, uh, Janae actually has to, you know, develop. A Somebody said, "What if Tina Charles comes to LA?" Nah, Tina wants to stay with Washington. I just, I, I, I just, it's, it's just like I think you got to start over. It's not about bringing in veterans anymore. It's not just, like it's that. just, it's just me personally, bro. I think that they have a now. Obviously, they're not going to win the championship this year, no. Mm-hmm. But I think they have enough to be a quality basketball team. And again, I think it's time after two years for Fisher to fully put his imprint. On this franchise, it's Again, the diva time. That too. When you look at when you like look at what he's done the past two years with players that he didn't really pick, just coming in and like bringing bringing you know a system. I think the first year he went twenty two and twelve. I think it was, wasn't it? Yes, yes. With hella injuries. Mm-hmm. What's wrong with that? The, I don't. Nothing's I like, wrong with that. Nothing. I I forgot what exactly the record was last year, but it wasn't bad. It was good. Weren't they like one win away from being the a, a team that got the buy? Yeah, like this is both years, like, both years, both, both years. You, yeah. You've been the three seed both years with players that you didn't even pick and you didn't even install. So mm-hmm. you basically like had a system and you try to t- tater that, tutor that system around the players mm-hmm. that you had. Now with those people leaving, you know, you get some cap room. You can finally sign the players that you want, and also. Um, I know, you know, uh, Brittany, she's a person she can, th- there are like yeah. way more scientists for her. She right. can do more things. Think about Brittany. it like this. There's only that play that was in the rotation. There's only two people that he really had a hand in bringing here. Taya Cooper as a replacement player and Brittany Sykes, that mm-hmm. trade. And those two players seem to work out. And those two players want to be here. Brittany Sykes made it known that she didn't want to go anywhere. She didn't want to hear any talk about her going to New York or Minnesota or Phoenix or wherever. She was like, I'm going to L.A. I'm staying in L.A. That's the end of it. Don't talk to me about anything else. So shout out to Brittany for getting her multi-year deal with the Sparks. And like you've been saying for the longest, Brittany Sykes can be a 16 point a game scorer. And 16 points a game is pretty close to top 10 in the WNBA because they only play 40 minute games. Yeah. Like that's an elite score. So if she can be a top 15 score, that's elite. And also I think that um like if he wants to do a style with a little bit more movement, I think that's possible now. Um I think that you know Candace and Chelsea sometimes can be ball stoppers. I think mm-hmm. um like if you have Candace, you have to sometimes run offense through her. Like if you're gonna have her with all she could do, you have to run offense through her. Same with Chelsea. I think both of them are best when they have the ball in their hands. Like, yeah, can they play off ball because they're smart? Yes. But I think yes. they're best with the ball in their hand. I think that now they have a team that's a little bit more – everybody can do things off ball. Like, I don't think NECA needs the ball. No, not at all. She, like, she doesn't need – like, she she can – She know, need, she needs to shoot, but she doesn't she need, the need the ball. Can I, can I let you in on a little secret and everybody who's watching and listening? When you look at – player efficiency metrics. Candace Parker and Neka Agumake, although their games look totally different and they do different things, there is almost no statistical variance in their player efficiency over their entire careers. That means you may not think Neka Agumake is as good as Candace Parker, but she is. When you look she, at the stats, yeah, no, well, no, when she, when, when, when she, you look at the numbers, she is just as good as Candace Parker is great. Candace Parker, one of the greatest players of all time, but Neko Gumake's stats are just as good. Therefore, that makes her one of the greatest players of all time as well. No, Neka, Neka, Neka is great. It's just that she plays a more. She actually plays like a power forward, whereas mm-hmm. like Candace plays like a Jokic. So like you'll notice more so of what Candace does because she's gonna have the ball, she's gonna be at the top of the key. She, she's more gonna do point, yeah. yeah, that fans are like, ooh, look at what she just did. But like NECA, it's like small things. Like even when I watch her play, it's like, yeah, she may not get two blocks a game, but you it's hard to score her in the post because she's just a very solid defender. She don't jump, she don't really foul, she just plays straight up. Right. Uh, offensively, she really only shoots the shots she can make. Right, it's and she like, makes them. She, she makes, makes six out of ten shots. shots. She really only shoots the shots that she can make. She doesn't like chuck up, you know, wild shots. She's very, very efficient. She, she uh, picks her spots very. It's it maybe isn't the sexiest game, mm-hmm. but 
it, but like you said, it's efficient and it works. She be shooting what like 50 some percent, 60 percent. Her highest she's ever shot was 66 percent for and a then, and, and then in the wobble, she was pretty much on track to shoot 60 percent up until the end of the year. Because remember, again, at the beginning of the season, I challenged her to shoot 60 yeah. percent, and she basically did. But but, but 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 again, like for a front court player, that is incredible. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. that is what you want when you have. I don't think people understand it. When you have front court players and shooting forty five percent, in theory, most of your things, most of your shots are are supposed to come near the rim. If you're a guard shooting forty five percent, that's fine because in theory, most of your shots are further away from the rim. But if you're right. a front court player, like just bring it back to NBA, Andre Drummond, his shooting percentages are terrible. I'm watching him play like bro. You all your shots come right at the rim and you uh-huh. shoot like forty eight percent. 49%. That As is a terrible. Pistons fan, I know all about it. That is we, thought, we talked about this in a separate conversation that if Andre Drummond made the shots that you see him miss, he'd still be on the Pistons. He he would get the biggest contract in NBA history, and he might be an MVP candidate if he just made them shots. So with that How did your song go about the max contract? Andre Drummond uh, would be uh, in the uh, remix. Uh, Facts. Andre Drummond Facts. would be in the remix if he Facts. made the shots he was supposed Facts. to make. But let, like, but let me put this out there though, real quick. So you got NECA who has made multiple all defensive teams. You got Brittany Sykes who just made her first one, who has the goal of being defensive player of the year. You got Taya Cooper who made it known that she wants to be defensive player of the year and make an all defensive team. That means you got three, you already got two elite defenders and you got an up and coming person who wants to be an elite defender. If three of your top six or seven players are pretty much on in top 10 defense are on, you know, first team or second team, all defense. You're going to win games just off of that. Agreed. Just off of that. Like now you got people who pretty much like the first thing they want to do is play defense. Like the first thing Brittany Sykes wants to do is lock you up. And then come down and break you down. Same thing with Taya Cooper. Like, Taya Cooper wants to lock you up. Taya Cooper let her skills be known in the limited practices they had against Chelsea Gray. Chelsea Gray was complimenting Taya Cooper on her defense after, like, a week. She didn't have to do that. Yeah. Now she's going to have to play against her. For real. Not just practice. I mean, but 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 in general, I just think you have to be excited. For one, again, like I said, it is a business for what Taya mm-hmm. brings off the court, but also on the court, see somebody who has the potential to, you know, have a 12, 13 year career in the league. And, you know, like you said, these are the elite women's players in the world. It's right. only 140 spots. It ain't like, you know, and it's not it's not like it's 500, 1,000, mm-hmm. no, right. it's 140 women who get to do this. So if she's in that 140, she's elite. And I think she can, and I think offensively, I think she's learning how to run a team. I think she's mm-hmm. learning how to do it. Um, I think maybe she needs to be a better shooter, but I think mm-hmm. her driving is uh nice. Um, and I'm very excited to see her progression personally. Somebody said bring over the 2020 draft pick. She's a mini Brianna Stewart. Okay, if you say so. Like that, she's probably not a mini Brianna Stewart. She's like I think, I think that's a little high. But you know, but bring her over. Yeah, bring her I mean, over. they got they got room for it. Let her let her prove herself. But a mini Brianna Stewart, that that's probably a little high praise. I feel like she probably would have been in the first round if she was a, a mini Brianna Stewart. Probably she probably would been the first pick in the draft. <laughs> but that's, that's yeah, right here, yeah. Um. So they still have room for free agents, okay? Because they're not paying Candace. They're not paying Chelsea. The only two players that they paid right now is NECA and Brittany Sykes. They still have to pay Janae. Taya Cooper's contract is inconsequential because it's the minimum, basically. uh, Chrissy Tolliver's contract is already locked in. So Sydney Weiss already locked in, TRP already locked in. So I don't know. That's the thing. Do you just stand pat like the Lynx did? Because think about the Lynx. The Lynx tried to get some upper echelon veterans last year, and then we looked and we were like, "Oh, the Lynx didn't do anything." 
They didn't do anything. And everybody was on the links. They end up being a top four team. They ended up making the semifinals. And then this offseason, they got two plug-in starters who are all-star level. Powers and McBride. So you don't have to do everything all in one year. Remember that too. Like this is a long game. This is not uh, everything has to be done in this one year. You don't have to be like the GM of the Detroit Pistons, Troy Weaver, and do everything this first year. You don't have to do that. You know, you know how he drafted like four people and he kept making all those trades and signing all those bigs and stuff. That's what I'm saying. You don't have to do everything this year. This is literally the first year that the Fishers are in the positions they're in. So you don't have to do everything right now. So if you if you have the right person that's going to fit that five out, bombs away, shoot threes that we want to see, fine, do it. If you don't, look forward and see who's going to be a free agent next year or the next year. Like this is a long term process. Like the WNBA is not going anywhere. This is the 25th year, but it's not going anywhere. So you don't have to win it all this year. I agree. That um I think you also have to to this doesn't seem to be a year in which I don't I think you're gonna see too many. I mean, I think the biggest stars have moved, but I don't think you're gonna see, I don't think this year will be like last year. I don't think I could be wrong. I don't think this year will be like last year, but you saw so many stars change. What do you, we already have enough more stars this year than last year. What changing do you mean? Teams. Changing teams? Yes. Alicia Clark is moving. Chelsea Gray is moving. Powers is moving. Candace is moving. I don't see, but see, but see, but some of those. Kayla McBride them. is moving. Yeah, but I don't consider all them stars. I could, I, I consider them. I'm talking about we had, we we had. Uh, Tina, who's one of the best players of all time, last year moved. We also yep. had uh, Skyler move. We mm-hmm. also had Chrissy Tolliver, who I personally think mm-hmm. is a star. And Dewana Bonner. Dewana Bonner. Well, those are stars. I don't think these people are stars. I think they're, they have the potential to be that, but I don't think these people are stars yet. Candace and Chelsea are, but yeah. Candace okay. Chelsea, yeah. Candace, yeah. Okay, yes, you're right. You're right. You're right. I think we will have more I overall. Think the biggest two over. are Candace and Chelsea. Now, granted, now this is not this, like Tina may go somewhere. Uh, Alyssa well, is not going that. anywhere. Tina not well, going. Well, Alyssa has an Achilles injury now, so I don't know. I, yeah, I'm she's sure not going to stay pat, but yeah. I don't think we'll see the same level of movement that we saw last season. Um, So for me, and again, I think that you like. And like, that's the other thing. Like, if you wait these teams out, because that's what the Lynx did. The Lynx waited everybody out. Everybody spent their money last year because it was the first year they could do it. And then what the Lynx do? They got two plug-in day one starters that are all-star level. If there was going to be an all-star game last year, Ariel Powers would have made it just off those first six games she played in. Yeah. Kayla McBride has already proven that she's been an all-star. So, like... You can if I would make out. a run at anybody, I would try to make a run at you know Sammy Wickham. Now your shooting ability, yeah, yeah, just yeah, like just because well, of the, the, the thing about it now is you got Storm money. got money now because Clark is gone. True. So they can pay Sammy whatever they think it's fair to keep her. True. And True. they should because they don't want to miss that opportunity to have somebody who can basically shoot at the same clip as Alyssa as Clark. It's true. As Alicia Clark. So they kind of got to keep her now. I mean, there's Wheeler on the board because clearly the fever probably don't want her. Wheeler's on the board. Does she move the needle? I don't know. I kind of actually know. really want to just trust Taya. I kind of want to just, you know, give her as much time, trust her at least for like a year. Mm-hmm. Just see what she can do. Like one thing I know she's going to do is play hard and play defense. I could work with that. Because if you need to bring Taya Cooper off the bench, you can always – Sidney Weiss has been – This is true. Bringing the ball up to court for years now. This Sidney Weiss has been that off guard who played point guard in college, who can do some of the things you need to do to alleviate the ball handling duties for a primary point guard or a primary lead guard. So you got somebody who can do that. And you still get to draft somebody in the draft, and there's plenty of point guards in this 2021 draft. I mean, half the first round may be point guards. Okay. So you can get 
a backup to Taya Cooper and Christy Tolliver that way as well. And did I not mention you still have a great defender in TRP there too. So true. like you have a great chance to have an amazing defensive identity with the Sparks now. You still got the defensive coordinator of the year, Coach T. You do. Our friend Latricia well, Trammell. We'll get back on the show and just we'll get her back. We'll get her back. Just yeah, we'll get her back I after Virginia. Personally, I think I know they I know like the ball sticking was a topic for them. I think mm-hmm. the ball should not stick as much. Mm-mm. Um, because even though Christy can't ISO, I also think that she can catch and shoot. Like she played in Washington. Well, like Washington wasn't out there just like running, running like isolation. That's not what they was doing. Um, so uh I do think so uh I do think that. Like I said, I think that they can still um, have a good team. I think that they can – all is not lost. Um, all is not lost. I do think that, you know, maybe – obviously for long-time fans, I think, you know, not seeing – even for me, you know, one of the main th- that, I, that I knew about the WNBA even before I started covering the league and getting into it as I am now was the fact that Candace Parker played for the Sparks. It's going to be really, really weird to see Candace Parker – in a completely different uniform, not playing for the Sparks. But at the it's gonna be so weird. Time, it's gonna be it's gonna be so weird. But at like the same time, all good things do come to an end. Um, it's not like you know they went back to being the worst team in the league. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, look, Candace didn't even play half of 2019, and they were still good. And it's not like Candace Parker just said, I'm joining the storm. I mean, I do think that like the sky got a extremely good team they do but it's not like she just joined the defending champions yeah, that's true. and said i'm playing there for the Still minimum it's, yeah it's, it's yeah right she could have she could have forced her way onto the storm it's still gonna be a challenge right like nothing it's, is guaranteed in chicago i actually think they have i actually think one of the question marks is the fact of like candace likes the ball but also courtney likes the ball but also i think diamond kind of needs the ball as well so it's like how do you Finango all that, finesse all that. They got a lot, but you know what? The sky has a great family atmosphere. So I think they'll be able to incorporate it in there. You saw how much fun they had in the Wubble. Obviously, Candace can get along with anybody. Everybody already loves Candace Parker because she's Candace Parker. So I, I mean I think I, it's a great opportunity for, for just her in general. Yeah. Like, like, but you know I, what though? I I've all of this movement. If Alyssa Thomas wasn't hurt, the sun would be my favorite. That's fair. Because they got John because, Quill. because it would be John Quill Jones, Thomas, Bonner, and Jasmine Thomas. They would be my favorite. And they're still a really good team because think about how well they did last year without John Quill Jones. So now they put John Quill Jones instead of Alyssa Thomas, they're not getting worse. They're not getting worse, but I but I do think they Alyssa, may not be getting better, but they're not getting worse. They're not getting worse, but I do think Alyssa Thomas brings things to the game that you just can't oh, even most definitely. Most yeah. definitely. I think she's one of the best players in the league. I agree. To and, me, she's like to me, she's like the Dennis Rodman of Draymond Greens. The Dennis Rodman of Draymond Greens. What does that mean? Like First I tried all, to repeat it in my like, head. Like, like, first of all, I think Dennis Rodman is better than Draymond Green. Like, I see a lot of, yes. like, I, I see a lot of what Draymond does in her, but I mm-hmm. think she is an elite, elite defender. I also mm-hmm. think just her presence on the court is pretty intimidating. Like, people just don't want to deal with her. It is. You just don't, like, I watched the game. Like, she literally destroyed the entire Sparks front line, and it looked like they didn't want to go hoop with her. Right. So no, it didn't. So so to me, she's she's just in that type of a vein, like that type of a vein of a player to me. Maybe um, that's where uh, Christina Nigwe got it from, because you know that's who drafted her, the Connecticut yeah. Sun. Yeah. I mean, I know she's already played like that, but I'm just saying, you know, maybe she just earned a little bit of that extra edge messing with Alyssa Thomas in practice. Holly C. Griffith said, uh, this is my first time listening to you guys. I love the conversation. You guys help me feel a bit more encouraged about the Sparks upcoming season. Yeah, I'm telling you, they're not going to be terrible. No, no. And somebody, some, And somebody earlier said that this is not a playoff team, not a playoff roster. That's not true. They're not one of the four worst teams in the league. 
first of all, NECA is one of the top 10 best players in the league, number one. Right. And, and number two, I know people just don't. People just have this thing with Fisher where they don't like him. But take all of your bias or whatever you – what has he done wrong on the basketball court so far with the Sparks? All like they, they've been they'll say, they'll say they'll say they'll say he ran Candace Parker away. Right, but you have no answer to that because we don't know. Yeah, and, one we don't know. Like, what if she just right. did not want to come? Like, what if she literally right. was like, "I just want to leave." Like, right? If she just wanted to leave. She had the unique opportunity to finally go to the Chicago Sky, the team that she watched her hometown team like what's so bad about that that's what i'm saying it's not like she went to the and i'm not saying this to pick on them but it's not like she went to the atlanta dream or it's not like she just was like i'm going to play for the indiana fever even if it was maybe she just liked the way they play basketball she has a right to do that she does have a right to do that but what i'm saying is You can never blame somebody for going home. Like, tell somebody they can't go home. What if she needs to go be closer to home for additional personal reasons? And you, you, what you gonna say? No, no. You're you're not. You're not gonna tell somebody they can't go home. This just you just don't do that. Like, in, in any in any profession, like. If there comes a time when I need to go back to Detroit, don't be mad that I went back to Detroit. God bless. But I'm saying, if I need to go back to Detroit, I'm I'm going back to Detroit. I'm joking. joking. If you need to go back to Chicago, I'm not going to be offended that you left and went to Chicago. Of course. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes you just have to do what you have to do. And this just happens to be that there's a basketball team there for her to play there, too. Okay, and it has all of these synergies. All of the players wanted her to come there, other than Cheyenne Parker, probably, because she took her spot. I think that's what it is. She, she took her spot, but I mean, Cheyenne Parker, you should not feel bad that that's who it took to replace you on that team. Cheyenne Parker, you will get another job. She got another job with the Dream. And exactly. Cheyenne Parker, you're gonna be the best player on the dream, and you're gonna ball out, and you're gonna make the All Star team, and, and everybody, and everybody gonna be looking at you, and you're gonna be averaging like 18 and 10, and, and they're Atlanta, gonna be like, "Why did they let Cheyenne Parker go?" And That's Atlanta, what's going is, and Atlanta is a great place for her. I think that you know she can work on her brand in um, Atlanta. You know, mm-hmm. if, most even, definitely because of her, her Instagram, her, her Instagram, like Atlanta is a mm-hmm. great place for her. Cheyenne, yep. you get to be in Atlanta in the summertime, you will be okay perfectly fine you will be okay and on the basketball court you can be the best player it will be okay Mm -hmm. because now think about the dream so now the dream is kennedy carter courtney williams i don't know who they were going to play at the three maybe hayes if they can get her to come back or mitchell um oh strickland but not they kind of had pushed her down but one of the tiffany's um Cheyenne Parker and Elizabeth Williams. It's not a bad team. It's a good team. Again, it's not a bad team. Is it better than Sparks? Uh, I don't know, but it's not a bad team. Um, but I'll be curious to see what happens. Like, And I think we should try to come back as soon as we can, but I'll be curious to see what happens after February 1st when you can like officially sign. I'll be, cur- I'll be curious to see if Candace or Chelsea – needs the max max and if they need the max max to play where they're playing that means you're gonna have to trade with the sparks so that means the sparks may get some assets back if chelsea gray decides that you know what i love y'all vegas but i need the super max but i can only get the super max from my home team so i'm gonna sign in with them and we're gonna trade me to you Yeah. yeah we'll see I definitely do think that would be interesting. Because favorite. because we both said that especially Candace Parker deserves the Supermax. Only way right. she's going to get the Supermax is if it's a sign and trade. And if it's a sign and trade, you'll get something for it. Yeah. So keep that in mind, too. You know, there's there's some more things that are going to happen. And this is 
This is a, a long-term thing. The Sparks also bringing back their entire coaching staff. Yeah. They're bringing back Coach Fred. They're bringing back Coach T and Fisher. Yeah, which I think for continuity. It was exactly. I, th- I, th- I think for you know continuity purposes, especially you know dealing with um, uh, a newer coach, um, and also dealing with newer players, which is going to be some newer players and kind of having like a new atmosphere around a franchise. I think it's important that you keep synergy within your um, coaching staff. I don't Fabby. Think you, what's up? Sorry. Go ahead, and I'll end on this. But go ahead. I don't think you want too much uh, turnover. Um, from year to year, especially when you lose somebody like Candace and also lose somebody like Chelsea, you want right. to at least make the coaching staff something that's stable from year to year. But right, you're building a system, and uh, yo, guess who won by 15 points? Who the Pistons? Detroit Pistons beat the Lakers by 15? Beat the Lakers 107 to 92. Shocking. Mm. 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 Fair. Mm. Mm. Beat sure. LA. Y'all Sparks fans mad about that. But yo, the Pistons are not a better team than the Lakers. They just happen to win on this night. AD didn't yeah. play. I mean, they should still beat the Pistons. Fair. But the Pistons try hard though. That's what I like about them. Like, that's what I like about teams, even if they're not, and that's the thing about the Sparks. Even if the Sparks are not as successful as you think they should be in 2021. If they play hard and they compete, you should be all right with it. Because if they play hard and compete, they will not be a bottom four team, period. And then they will be building a culture going forward where you can have your year like the Lynx and bring in two all-star level starters and then be right there. So exactly. you got to think about it like that, too. So and I think that's also, a good way to wrap it up. We also got to remember it is L.A. People will always come when we get more back to normal. Yeah. People will always come and spend their summer in Los Yeah, Day. yeah, yeah. Um, Brittany Sykes didn't even want to entertain anybody. She was like, I'm staying in L.A. You get some other people involved in that culture, you'll get the same thing. There'll be some people who are just like, I want to play in L.A. I'm playing in L.A. And that's the end of it. Indeed. So got to think about it like that. But all right, I'm John W. Davis. You can find me on Twitter at John W. Davis. You can also find me on YouTube at John W. Davis Media. Also, shout out to Winsider. Everybody there, they've been doing a great job with the free agency tracker. You know, Rachel Gallion, REA, Ben, all the new staff. Everybody's been doing a great job. So shout out to them for, you know, breaking a lot of news. With this, uh, Pavi, where can we find you? And when am I getting the song about one, women with the WNBA reference? There was it was off lips. It was. It was. It was, it it was, was in there. there. I listened to it. I didn't hear it. I got to listen again. Listen again. I said when you came over for the Sparks game. Listen again. Oh. It's in there. It's the first bar of the second verse. It's in there. So as all y'all, uh, I actually. We'll put it on the end screen in here. Um, go check out okay. my new song, uh, Soft Lips. It's out right now. Um, but yeah, follow me on Twitter at Pavy World, P A V Y World, all one word. And like I said, go check out Soft Lips. It's out right now on all streaming platforms. And is this a true story? When somebody came nah, over for the fact, first game? It's factual. It's factual. It's factual. Excuse me. It's factual evidence. Everything I say is factual evidence. She's actually from Detroit. The lady is from Detroit. So in your reporting, so as you were following the sparks for reporting. You invited yeah, a, a young lady over to yeah, she was, yeah. I said I said when you came over for the sports game, then I went to it and then I was like, We spoke about Saturday Lamarck, how to play golf to Pistons and how trash they are. Sorry. But that was oh, a, I think I think I did hear the how trash yeah, that was a, that was a yeah, that hmm. was an actual factual it was factual evidence. Okay. Well, then maybe you should uh I don't know what it's like right now, but uh Maybe you should text the congratulations because the Pistons beat the Lakers. All right, y'all. It's been the Spark Report. John W. Davis and Pabby. Peace.